Hey, what's up? John here, and this is your Tuesday Blues. And this week, we're going to take a look at that jazzy 12-bar blues progression that I just played. Now, there's a couple of guitar techniques and maybe a couple of different voicings and fingerings of some chords. So there's really a lot going on here, but we're going to break it down step by step and get that 12-bar progression under your fingers. Well, let's get to it. Alright, so before we strum through and really get a sense of this progression, I want to take a second and look at the chord voicings and fingerings that we're going to use in this uh, lesson. So to play our A7, and you may know A7 in this position, this one, or here, you know, there's a lot of different ways you can play it. And this particular fingering is going to be very comfortable um, and allow you to do some of the bass little moves that we were doing in this piece. And so I really recommend fingering this with your middle finger leading off on the A note, sixth string, fifth fret, and then sneaking your ring finger in, fifth fret, fourth string, and then sixth fret, third string with your pinky. And these are really the only three notes from the A7 that we're going to play. It's just a three note sort of stripped down voicing. And it sounds really jazzy, especially when we move into uh, this next voicing for the D7. So A7, and here's our D7. And notice it's pretty convenient. We're right here in the same territory, really. Um, but the fingering is going to be, we're going to lead off with the middle finger, fifth string, fifth fret, first finger, fourth string, uh, fourth fret, and then the ring finger on the fifth fret of the third string. And we're going to slide that up two frets for our E7 shape. So we've got A7, D7, E7. But there's one more chord shape in there, and it's this uh, B minor seventh chord shape here. And again, we're going to stick with that three note voicing. So I'm going to lead off with my middle finger on the seventh fret of the sixth string, and then seventh fret of the fourth string with my ring finger, and then my pinky on the seventh fret of the third string. So a quick recap, we've got the A7 played like this, D7, E7, and then this B minor 7. All right, now let's put those in place where they go in the progression. So I'm not going to do any fancy picking or any of the rhythm. We're just going to hit the chord and walk through the bars. It's really important to know the structure of the progression before you try to add anything else, you know, fancy, any bass licks or anything. So let's start with bar one. Bar one is going to be the A7 chord. One, two, three, four. And then we move to the D7 sort of a quick change blues for one bar, then back to A7, two, three, four, for two bars, three, four, then back to our D7, two, three, four, again, and A7, for two bars, four, one, two, three, four, then we move into our B minor seventh, two, three, four, for one bar, and then we move into the E7 for a bar, three, four. Then back to the A7 for one bar. And then we go back and split the last bar between the B7, one, two, three, four. Between the B7, B minor seven, and the E7. So here we go. I'm just going to play the chords through and let you have a listen at what this progression sounds like. So now what we want to do is add a little bit of the uh, the strumming sort of rhythm. We're not really strumming, but just sort of doing this little um, rhythmic deal here. All right, so let's take a closer look at that. This this rhythm repeats itself over all the chords. Even when we get to this B minor seven. 
apply the same rhythm to each of the chords. So let's dive in deep into what our picking hand is doing here. We already know how to fret up this A7. So I'm leading off with the bass note. And then I've got my two fingers, my first finger and my middle finger on my picking hand kind of locked together because we're going to pick the uh, fourth and third strings simultaneously here. But once we pick it that first time, I'm going to lightly pick up on the strings with my fret hand so that I'm choking down on those notes. I don't want them to ring out in this particular piece. Just to kind of make a little staccato statement, just a boom, down, boom, you know, just like that. So it's kind of accenting that offbeat. And then we're going to pick all three strings, the bass string and the fourth third combination together, but let it ring that time. So it adds a little bit of, of rhythm to this thing. And you can cycle through all of the chords. This applies to everything. But I do want to talk about how we're going to handle that last bar bar 12 where we split the bar between the B7 and the E7. We'll do a chord change in the middle of that uh, little rhythmic sequence. We'll go bass, staccato, and then move into the other chord and hit all three. This would be the fifth, fourth, and third string. So it sounds like this. kept that rhythm the same, but we're just changing chords in the middle of it. All right, the last thing that I want to show you before we put this thing back together is um, the little bass walk up that I'm doing at each uh, chord change. So, and that's really the reason why I want to fret this A7 like this. You know, normally you would fret it, you know, maybe a couple different ways, but um, for me, right now, I want to do this walk-up technique, and it really helps to have my first finger free here. So let's walk through the first few measures of this, and I'll show you how I'm using that walk-up technique on the bass line. Did you catch it right there? And there? So having my first finger free allows me to just very easily walk right into this D7. And of course I'm picking that with my thumb on the picking hand. And I'm walking up first finger and walking right into the chord. So that first walk up looks like this. And then you can walk back up um, from the A flat to the A. So you use that technique almost all the way through the chord changes. get ready to do that B minor 7th, I'm going to walk up with my middle finger. So we land on this, and I'm going to walk up, use my whole hand, move my whole hand here so I can get in position around the 7th fret. Then walk up to the E, and then I'm going to walk back up to the A. Okay? And then the final bar, I'm going to walk back up and do something like that. Add a little something different rhythmically in bar 12. So I'll go. seven chord as well. This walk up technique is really cool and you can just walk into the bass line. It gives the bass strings a little bit of life and it really to me helps make this sound like just a real jazzy. Uh, Alright so now I want to put all the pieces together and I'll play through it uh, rather slowly to let you uh, really pull together the alternate voicing, the rhythm, and adding in this bass step up. 
time. So here we go. All right, I hope you really enjoyed that. This is uh, one way that you can really start thinking about your 12-bar blues in a little bit different fashion. You know, this works great for a finger picker on an acoustic guitar, and it certainly gets you out of that, you know, standard 12-bar blues shuffle type sound. Nothing wrong with that, but we certainly want to keep growing and expanding our knowledge of the guitar, and this is one way to do that. And I love this stripped down voicings. It really helps you get inside the chord and really hear the chord changes going through. I hope you love it as much as I do. And if you want to pick up the tab to this, you'll need to be a free member of Blues Guitar Institute. And you can go to the homepage, bluesguitarinstitute.com, and click on sign up to learn how to become a free member. And then every time you're logged into your account, you'll see a PDF and a Guitar Pro 5 and a Guitar Pro 6 version of the tab. So I highly recommend picking up the tabs. They're a great practice tool. You can print them out, get them in front of you, watch this video, uh, rewind, pause, all that stuff, and just really get down to the work of getting this lesson down. Now, I wish you a ton of luck in doing that, but if you need any help, certainly reach out to me, and uh, we'll see what we can do to get you through it. Thanks, take care, and I'll see you next week.